as you're documenting, you know, the rock and roll subculture, and as it is such a like analog subculture and so raw, do you think that if you were trying to portray that with digital, as it's so not analog and it's so computerized, would you be able to get the same feel in your Imagery. No, I mean like start. I mean, if you look at Annie Leibovitz's early work and Henry Diltz and all the great rock and roll photographers, which what really defines that aesthetic is film. And so I gravitated towards that immediately and just thought it really added something to. I, I think it's important what you're shooting. Like, yeah. and and to that point too is when you bring a, a grainy film into a very sterile, uh, sleek environment. It also brings this whole other element to docking, saying like, you know, yeah. doctors or scientists, or like, yeah, you know, because you never know what we'll find ourselves doing for work. But it's, it's interesting to bring something I developed and mimicked other photographers for rock and roll into other settings. Yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> Do you feel like both you guys, as you get, because you know we're all relatively young. As you get busier, you're going to be forced into a position to have to take digital on, though, like in a like a production capacity. Like, are you guys expecting that? Are you guys going to? No. Do you expect to work? You expect to work around it? Or I not have. It? I mean, I I literally am. Fortunately, I'm. At, this last year has been so busy; it's absolutely insane. But I have the team, and and have developed. You know, I can turn my images around as quickly as digital except for the exceptions where the client wants to walk off the set with the hard drive. Sure. But there's other than that. But at the same time, it's like if, if the delivery isn't the day of the shoot, I'm turning around as quickly as, as digital is. And so if you're demanded to shoot it, you're demanded just because they literally want to see it on set. Like they want to see that they, they need like the assets, right? The, the pictures right then and there. Yeah, I mean, certain advertising clients, well, I'm, you know, I'm sure you know, they need to know they got it. They're investing exactly. so yeah, much money and there's the ad agency and the mm -hmm. clients. But also, a lot of ad agencies are incredibly creative and they really appreciate their style. And like I said, if they're hiring me, they obviously, for whatever reason, like what I do. Right. And a big part of that is that I, I'm a film photographer. It's what I do and it's what defines oh, cool. my style, you know? But. So you're kind of warm them, up, warm them up front. There might be a day. They know. I yeah. feel like people know I shoot film, and I feel like some people are attracted to me because of yeah, that. Right. Right. I'm sure I turn some people off, but that's just that's just being an artist or any creative yeah. profession. Everything you do is going to be for somebody, uh, not yeah. for somebody yeah. else. So exactly. you're not trying to please everyone. You no, gotta stand you can't. Up can you guys can you guys shoot both on the same job? Like the same. Yeah. Can you guys have them side by side on the table and shoot them? Sometimes I've, I'll oh, yeah. do that. I've, sure. Oh man, that's I've cool. done. Um, what did I do? Oh, it was, a, it was a job with the ad agency BBDO shooting Tony Braxton for an Autism Speaks campaign with her son. And I shot digital and I also shot film. And nine out of 10 times when I'm forced to shoot digital, I also make sure I get film in there. They choose the film image mm. because that's what that's my look. work looks like. Yeah. You know?